emulators or the terminal wizards. So these are nothing but a gateway to connect a mainframe actually. Like we use RDP or PuTTY to connect to VMs, right? Similarly, we use emulators to connect to mainframe. They play as a role of connector basically. And now as a second point here, to use terminal activities in the studio, we need to install a package with the name uipath.terminal.activities. The version as of now is 1.3.4, I guess. And now this third point is really interesting, but it's an also an optional thing for an actually RPA developer to know. In general, in real time, your operations or mainframe team will help you to create one. But as we have time here, let's see how to do it. And in order to achieve today's goal, we need to have a mainframe, right? So to have a mainframe, uh, we have uh, for demo purpose, we have used a trial version of mainframe by creating an account on PUB 400. Let me just show you this on PUB 400. And to access this particular mainframe, what we have done here, is we have downloaded one software actually mocha soft mocha soft is nothing but application that are software which helps us to access uh, the maintain sessions like the mainframe sessions actually i mean right now i for this demo purpose i'm going to use a trial version hence it may be a slightly different than the one which we get in real time but overall you will get the idea here so to create a mainframe session i just need come here as I say we have created an account frame account on pup400.com so just you need to come to this file get for the very first option edit and here you get all those things what you need to create a mainframe session first of all you will need to provide this name of a session as I have right now given as a session A is the name of this particular session then you need to provide this IP address. Again, you do not have to worry about this IP address because it will come either from your client side or your mainframe team. They will provide it to you. But for this demo purpose, this mainframe, this IP address has been given as pub400.com. And this uh, port number, is it, it is always going to be fixed by default. You really do not have to worry about the port number. It will be around, uh, it will be 23rd port number actually. And the next point, what you see here is a terminal size. Terminal size, it actually tells you the screen, this mainframe screen, what you see right now, it has been divided into how many rows, how many columns. If I go for 27 cross 132, so it will have 27 rows and 132 columns. If I go for 24 cross 80, means 24 rows and 80 columns. So it depends upon a choice. It's, it's this, there is nothing mandatory. It depends upon a company choice. They use any of them. Right now, we'll go for only this part. And next, we see as a device name, right? So device name, it is an optional thing. But see, on a mainframe, you run different applications. It's always good to give some device name so that you can identify which particular process is executing right now. And when you create the session for the first time, one time you will have to provide the username and password here. So right, as I said, it is just a trial version, so I will not be able to create any other system. Okay, but in real time, as many as sessions if you want, you can create. So let's just click on apply and connect. It will get created. So for me, it's already created. Okay. So right now I will not be able to create one. Yeah. So yeah. let us see. Anupam, so you mean to say, this yeah. this entire setup will be done by the operations team or the mainframes team. Yes. So technically, RPA developer no need to juggle here. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So okay. So now we know how to create a mainframe session, right? We are good till here. So let's move further uh, to the slide part. What we have next here is input and output methods, right? So these input and output methods are nothing but the activities we are going to use either to load the data or to, uh, to load the data to the mainframe or to extract the data from it. We will see those activities in a couple of minutes when we move to the studio. So please do not worry, we are going in detail with all those things. And the next point, what we see here, how a UI path will get connected to, uh, how will UI path will communicate with the mainframe screen? Basically, there are two ways. 
by using coordinates. As you know, just now we have been by creating main frame systems. These are divided into coordinates, right? 27 cross 132, 24 cross 80, right? So by using these coordinate values or by visual elements by recording. So identifying the fields on a screen using coordinates are more reliable as you exactly know where to aim the target. And recording is as traditional as what we have seen earlier in UI path. Now, please be assured till now we are here, we all good, right? Say so we all good here till now, right? So let's move to next part. It's really juicy and guys, I would like to request, please understand this part properly. Okay, this is the soul of your, this is going to be the soul of your project actually. This from here, it is you are going to create a connection between your studio and the mainframe system what you have created. And this part we'll see on the studio directly here. While performing this, I'll explain this one entire thing here. Okay, so now just let us go to studio. Let me just open studio. Let me create a process here. Let me give a name. Automating mainframe. I have given name properly. Yes. So, so Anupam, while you're explaining uh, the plot size, the 27 into 132, are, the, the, these are nothing but the coordinates. The screen coordinates. gets divided into, is it? Exactly. Exactly, yes. So I may have 27 uh, rows and 132, 132 columns. columns. Is that so? Yes, yes, exactly. Yeah, so, super. Now let us come here and see what and all things are here. We need to go. So once we have come here, before that, you know, the, the moment if I have to drag any activity. So first of all, uh, for mainframe, I need to do some this thing just came with let's let me check whether this activity is this package is available or not no it is not there let us download this package as i said for the package name it will be uipath.terminal.activities so if i search by the name terminal i get this as i said the version will be as of now 1.3.4 here you can see just let me install and save it. Once it gets saved, we'll see further. So Anupam, in the projects, do we need to make any changes as of now? Because we have the beta version 20.6. Yes, yes. I do have a few things to make a change. Yes, in dependencies, I need to make few changes here. Just give me guys this thing, which is beta version. And sometimes we have seen that they will not respond properly. So it's always good to get the stable one. So if I go for this system, just from the all packages only, you can just from the all package right? only, yes. So let me save it in this one. And so just to let you guys know what we're doing here is we wherever the latest package, the 20.6, the latest release is there. We're trying to avoid and we're bringing it to the stable version so that when you practice, you can relate it to the same. Yeah, that's right. So just let me go for this one as well for a stable version. And yes. Now, really, the juicy part is about to come. I, I, I insist, please understand this part properly here. Okay, it is really going to uh, be the base of your coding, actually. So the first activity, let me first drag one flow chart here. We will do in flow chart so that it will be easier to make decisions if we have to. Okay, so just let me give some name TV and the very first activity to use terminal activities is terminal session. This is really important and going to be the soul of your entire code here. Now we see here this thing, right? The moment I have dragged a terminal session activity, we are getting few options here. 
and if we get here so i'll explain one by one each and everything the provider is nothing but to see there are different service providers in the market of mainframe right so it just specifies that which provider to be used there is a list of it anyone you can choose as per your organizations doing this thing okay working culture and all okay you do not have to worry about that okay you can go for this ibm personal communication most of the time people use this ibm personal communication or ibm ehl labi okay but for this demo purpose we are going to use ui path internal here right now okay so but anyhow i'll explain what and all things are there so for example if i go for this ibm personal communication i only need to browse this part okay in side my system where i have created a mainframe session so right now we are accessing the mainframe from pub400.com so it's that session has not been created in my system but in real time if you when you have this thing that particular session file by the name of .ws or it may be some other files also you will have to choose that just browse that file and you are good to go so here we are going to use ui path internal for our demo purpose the moment i have selected this ui path internal see depends upon the provider this connection type these details are getting changed okay so based upon the provider again you will have to play around and again you do not have to worry all those informations your client side or your mainframe team there will help you to provide all those informations and the second point what we see here is so client application right it is just a flag which specifies if the third party provider window is being displayed during recording or the play of execution of the code you really do not have to worry about this as well by default it will be ticked only so once i have chosen this ui path internal then i have i will have to specify all the details manually here the address again as i said with the mainframe session while getting the mainframe session the ip address what we we have we need to provide this thing so if you remember that particular ip address we had entered as pub400 dot com okay and again the port number there also we have seen 23 yeah, okay. and this type it's just a type of the mainframe basically there are three kinds you again you really do not have to worry about this thing whatever your organization we have chosen to use this type of mainframe you only have to select that part these are just the versions of mainframe project. this is a little bit older one and this is a bit newer one and this bit is virtual terminals so for demo purpose we are going to use this 3270 i'm not going to make any changings here so at the moment if i click okay please guys please see this part this is really important here yes i'm just clicking on okay the moment i click on okay you can see here we have gotten two screens this is just to display what we have what we'll do here and this allows you this screen particularly allows you to record the session here only you have what you need to do is just you need to come here and if you have to type something just you can type and it will keep on getting recorded so this is how in you need to perform your job whatever the process you have to perform and it will by by default it will generate a set of activities to perform this task but as i said using coordinate method is going to be more reliable right so we are going so, to perform that Yeah, Anupam, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Please tell me. So, so this is the page as which works similar to our recording, right? Our web recording, desktop recording. Exactly, exactly. Similarly, yes. I can play it here without uh, dragging and dropping any activities. Perform the steps, post which I'll get a set of activities pre-prepared. Yes, yes so, exactly. Yeah. So, but we are going to perform using coordinate methods to automate our mainframe the process. So, just let me close this part here. okay the moment you get that particular screen it means the session with you uh, this connection between ui path studio and mainframe has been established properly successfully okay so but now come when we come here now before starting this different kind of activities to automate a process we need a process right see i have taken a trial version of mainframe access to pub400.com but on that mainframe there should be something to automate right there should be some process so in order to do that to get a process 
we have say, taken some extended help from our mainframe developer colleagues and we have developed a very small code for this demo purpose here which i'll explain you even the code as well okay so now if i before coming here if i go for the activities you can see here right directly as i said input and input, output methods by using the very understanding the difference between get word and set word you will be able to identify which is going to be the input method in activity or which is going to be the output word. when you give when you use some get field get word means you are taking the data from the screen so these are basically nothing but your output activities okay through which you get the output from the main screen you get you extract the data but when we use go for this one set field or set field at position by using means we are performing something on the screen means we are giving some input to the screen so these are basically your get and set words clearly indicates you gives you the information about which one is input activity which one goes to be output activity along with that we have few other activities also on go i'll explain one of one by one each of them okay so now let's go to the coding part first and before coding as i said we have taken some small okay uh, code we have developed a very small process on mainframe so here when, when i come here i need to enter first of all my user id and then password right so now you see as i say if i the right now the cursor where it is reflecting its coordinate value you can identify in the bottom you guys can see this bottom part right sayed you can see this part right so this is is the coordinate actually means where actually this this cursor is activated right now so if i have to type here something okay means i need to give some input to the screen right so how do we do it and before or to if i have to give this credentials so yes uh, i have already developed on ko code to get the credentials from orchestrator so just let me use that particular just let me invoke that thing and before that again if i have to make any decision inside i'll use again one flow chart okay so if i have to go just let me rename it so that you people can understand it in better way i say in our flow chart so if i first of all i need to invoke this credentials right as it is an as general as it's okay in any other ui part automation you use so just let me invoke workflow file yes let me go for this thing and yes the code what i have developed here just let me go to that get credential get tab credential and just select me copy this entire code only and let me put it here let me create one more process i say you put it and that will help us to understand and inside it i'll just copy that code here get trap credential and a moment if i go here just let me go to here imported get appearances just this thing and as the we are getting this in a username and password from the other code i need some variables to store that right so just let me create two some simple variables to contain the user id and password so i set username and let it go for this thing and just and password is going to be security just going to change its data type to secure string just nothing just we have done this thing and again let me change the scope of it yeah we are good to go now now we have already invoked the code and just 
import the arguments. Let me the password is going to for password and user mainframe user is going to for username. Yeah, good to go. Now let's go here. Now we have the credentials with us inside our code. Okay, now how to use it on this screen? So if I have to pass the user ID here, so just let me track this activity. Guys, please understand this part properly, how do we use these activities? And yes, this is set field at position. Just see guys please understand this part which the activity by seeing the activities property only you will understand what is here it asks right on which row on which column and what text i need to pass i need to set right so we know this this is going to be fifth row and 25th column right so i have just just passed sorry fifth row and 25th column and what is the it is username right so let's come Anupam, here can you show us again once more yes, yes where sir. do i find the coordinates just, just for yes. our audience yes yes see by seeing this screen the cursor right now where it is reflecting it is reflecting at fifth row 25th column in the bottom you can see can you see this here yeah. yeah right so if i see if i move the cursor a bit here coordinate has been changed okay. fifth row yeah, 26th yeah. column right super, so on, super. here i just pass this username now i need to pass and one thing guys please understand this area if i use any this activity it will not accept secure string it accepts only a string right but the when i have to pass this is a password we know that it is a secure string data type so we will use some other activity to you do that but before that i'm just using move cursor activity why i'm using i'll just explain it okay send key secure keys yes why i have used this move cursor please see here the moment i have dragged this thing it does not have any coordinate values this activity so whatever will be the activated area on the screen it will just pass that information there okay so to bring the cursor to the required location before it i have used this move cursor activity move cursor activity again it will be just below 2525 so it will be 625 where i need to pass this thing see guys here i have to pass the password it has 625 sixth row 25th column we are good here yeah anupam a uh, few people are requesting about the voice okay can you maybe probably okay. keep your mic a little you, bit perfect okay yeah can you hear me is it fine yeah, i can hear you some, some people finding it low uh oh sorry yep yep i will take saying uh, yeah it's fine now go ahead go ahead yeah thank you guys and yes when we have to pass the secure key, just I need to pass the password what we had created, right? The password. And once I have given the password, user ID and password, I need to press enter, right? So to press enter, we have say one activity and the here. And yes. the Again, your voice is. Oh, is so, so you please. Yeah, now it is fine. It is fine now. Maybe you. you it's fine now. Please keep your My mic name. in the same position, please. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Yeah. So yeah, send control key is the next activity what we are going to use. The send control key, it allows you to whatever the information you need to pass to the screen. To, if you have to press any key there, you can use. Transmit is the option to press enter, actually. So by default, it comes with a transmit. So we are good to go here. Right. So it is as similar like sending hotkeys. Hotkeys, yes. But in hotkeys, okay. you have combinations, right? Here, you do not have any combinations. OK. Yeah. So once I have pressed this thing, 
your user ID and password, I need to press enter. So I to automate further process, I need to go inside. So manually, let me do it right now. Just let me get this thing. Guys, you did you see one thing? Where I do you can see the but when I input this password, you cannot see the password. In real time also, you cannot see the password. If you type on the screen, you cannot see the password. But please remember this scenario. I'm going to explain this particular point somewhere while executing the code. So please uh, understand this one thing. Here you are not able to see the password, right? Okay, so if I need to press enter, okay. So just give me some time. Okay, actually to explain this thing, we have opened this thing. As it is a trial version, yes, of course, it comes with few limitations as well. So just let me close it and reopen it so that it will work properly. Just I'm just doing one thing. Because yes, this is a trial version, so because of that thing, you have few limitations with the screen. For learning purpose, you will have to manage the thing. But in the meantime, you do not have such any kind of such issues. Yes, now we have come here to this screen, right? And it is again, so there are some, these activities are going to be performed very quickly. But here, what we have seen after pressing the enter, it has taken some time. So for safety purpose, what I'm going to do here, when I press enter, I'll just simply increase some time out limit property so that our code will not get failed. Okay. So now, once I have come to this particular thing, see, we have developed or we have a process in the mainframe, right? So in that that process is where it will be somewhere in the program management uh, manager file. Okay, program development manager file actually. It is the file from where you can call any object or a editable text, anything you have to execute. You can call it from there. And to call a particular program, you will have to call that particular uh, program manager program development manager file. So to call that particular file, the command is strpdm. If you do not know this particular thing, please understand this part, but anyhow, while doing this actual process, all those commands, how a mainframe uh, this process is being executed, your mainframe team will help you with all those commands. But few commands, if you know, it's good to, but it's good to go. So that you will understand how exactly the code is being called, the process is being executed. So I need to start give this command strpdm. This stands for start program development manager. So and did you see guys see if we have to give here this coordinate is 27, right? 20th row, seventh column. At this particular location, I need to provide a text that is strpdm. So what I'll do, I'll just again use set field at position. And in the beginning only, just let me just give it this idea because we will need some space. I hope till now we are good here. See guys, till now what we have done, we have to do the credential activity to get the credentials from orchestrator. Then to enter the user ID, we have used this particular activity to set a field at particular location that is nothing but on 5th 25th we have passed this user id and then to move to this uh, secure key we have just move a cursor to the required location and we have passed the information there and then we have just press enter and after entering it we are moving forward right now okay so just let me yes so once i go inside again this is the area this 20th 7 right so I'll just pass this coordinate. I hope you guys will be getting this family right by seeing the coordinate only. You can 
we, you can determine what exactly, where exactly you need to communicate. Something, a command which has to go at a particular location, and if you try to give that command at any other location, your activity will get failed. Your a mainframe screen will not accept that command. So it's very much required, very much essential to give the proper command at proper location only. Okay. So just I'll just pass this command. So note this command, guys. Okay. So after after giving this command, I'll just uh -oh. enter again. I need to press enter. So if I have to press enter again, we will go for which activity? That is nothing but send control key, and we will. Just let me make few space here. Because we are going to need a bit of space here. So yeah. So just we will give a send control key, and that by default it takes transmit. That is enter. So now see here. Right now this particular thing I am doing manually. After automating this, running this code, we will do it again. We will execute it. So if I press enter here, okay, by coming here, it will go there. Yes. Yeah. Anupam, we seem like losing your voice. So your current okay. position of yourself and mic is not good. Yeah, it is fine now. Better than before, but not so great. Uh, can you try one more time? Yeah, yeah. Can you? Is it fine? Yeah, it is fine. Please hold your mic. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Okay. Again, as we have moved, see, this is a trial version. So when we, while for explaining purpose, when I move this cursor position from one place to another place, this screen does not accept right now. But as I said. In real time, this is not the scenario. We, these are few limitations of a trial version screen. So right now, if I'm pressing this thing, enter, it is not accepting. So it's a better, let me just cross this, close this file. Okay, I'll just close it. And just let me reopen it. This is what I'm right now doing just to design this coding part actually. Okay, for explaining purpose, I have to every time, I have to move the cursor here and there. Yes, it is, we had, we had closed this part. Okay, no issues. So now, if I go for here, at this particular location, we are already designed. VTM, if I go inside, yes. Now on this particular location on 20th 7 again, my files have been kept with a member in option three actually. So I'll just call that particular third option here. I just pass the command three here. I need to just select one option from here. So let's go to the code and there again, we have to pass three, right? So just I'll use set fillet position and what is the coordinate value is 27 right so 27 and what i need to pass is three and again once i have given three what do i need to do i need to press enter so to enter again i'm going to use a command which activity that is nothing but send control key again to give an enter so the moment i have given this send control key means it has gone to the next page now guys please understand this particular file now inside this program development manager in which file my code is kept in your normal scenarios right now my cursor is exactly there where i need it the way i have designed but in normal scenario your cursor may be somewhere else so in that case, to select that particular file, if I have to select this particular library, I have to need to go inside this particular library, I need to select this area and then I need to press enter. So, but as of now, I need to go to the file and this is already, this has been selected, right? So I only have to again press enter here. So again, I'll use the same control key again here to go inside the file where my process has been kept, the process what we have developed 
to execute okay that has been kept right just let me get a few more spaces here yes guys so if once i have come here i have to now i'm inside that file now inside that file i have two or uh, five okay two programs there the one which we have developed out there okay and this if i have to call that particular process i need to give the command to this particular location this location is 21 7 just let me go for again set field at position here and this location is nothing but 21 and 7 i hope my voice is fine till now and yes and the command what i have to give here i need to call this particular file right so the command will be call webinar the file name is webinar right so which i'm just calling this particular file so i just pass this command here okay i have called then i have to press enter the moment i'll press enter this code will get a start executing here so i just need to give enter to use enter again i'm going to use send control key so now guys please understand this part till now what and all things we have done we have just used this credential part to access okay the mainframe user id and passwords then we just logged in by providing user id then we moved you to and we provided this one keyword as a password as a secure key then we just after giving enter we just called that particular program and development manager file where my actual file is okay by there i have we have just called the file and by after calling that file we have just called in that file which process has to get executed so uh, i hope you guys are understanding the flow of the program how do we call a program okay so now the moment if i have called this thing and i press enter this job this page will come now please guys please understand right now we have only one one screen as of now but i would like to elaborate something else as well in real time what happens the when this command this execution gets completed you may have different kinds of a screen one screen which will tell you the job is running properly or one screen which tells you the job has been completed or if there is some error while executing the job okay so in that case you will get some other screen with the error logs so accordingly you will have to proceed with that so as in the back end we have only few data here we do not have any thing to get you know to get any error so we are we are not going to get any other piece of now but in real scenarios of course you will have something you may have you will get something or other thing so accordingly you will have to design your code so now if i have to go here okay guys you can see right now for explaining purpose i'm going to move cursor one place to another place this screen will get again hand okay so i'll just i'll again i'll close and i'll come to this screen again manually okay so just see if i have to if i need to understand once i have executed my code and where is it okay what exactly is going on so as per the process you will be knowing that if the code is running fine which screen will be appearing if the code is not running fine which screen will be appearing so if i need to capture this area by using this screen header you will be able to identify what exactly it is so now you see here it's a first row and 28th column till where it will be 51th column so i will just capture this particular area as of now okay if i have to capture it here till now what we had given all those set activities right? we are giving input to the main okay. now we are going to take some output to identify what, what exactly is happening so here we have this activity to get field and if i use this get field it will again it will also not ask you any coordinate values the entire screen value it will just capture but i need to go for a particular location right so i'll go for this thing get a screen 
area. If I go for this thing, again, starting from which row to which column I need to capture the data, starting from first row till 28th column, from till from here to when the first row only 51th column, 51st column. So when it will capture whatever appears, whatever data appears between these coordinates. It will capture it and to save that thing, I'll just create a variable guys. I'm just going to key page name. Yes. So this page name information will hold the information. Okay, whatever it captures on this particular screen. Right now, see if I get this particular message, let's automate AS400. It means my job has been completed successfully. Right. So just let me first, if I get this page, just let me evaluate because instead of this, in real time, you may get some other screens as well. Now it's time to make few extra places. Yeah. So now I'll just use a flow switch, oh, sorry, flow decision activity. Whenever we use flow charters, always to use flow decision to use a decision. So now I know that this particular page, okay, whatever this area it has captured, it has to be this particular header with this header, right? So just let me copy it. I'll copy as it is so that we can make a decision on it. So in decision part, I'll just write. His name and let me just stream it. So, okay. Dot contains okay, right. So if this particular area what we have captured in the variable page name, if it is this particular page in this name, it means I am on the page where my job is getting executed properly. If not, if this condition will not match, in that case will go for its false side. But here we are, we have not developed any error in the, this code. So of course, this is not going to be, if there is something we will, you will have to design accordingly. But as of now for this demo purpose, I'm just going for its true side. So if this condition is true, it means I'm on the right page. So now if I'm on the right page, I need to search whether this particular page right now, this message has appeared on this particular location. But in real time, it can be depends upon the number of jobs. Okay, in, inside which what and all jobs has been executed. This particular location can be anywhere. It can be here first line also. It can be in the last line also, right? So in, in that case, what we need to do is, I'll just screen, I'll capture one screen. And just let me yes guys yes okay I hope we are good till here we are understanding everything right Sayed? it's really good and some, some your voice is something that of I course guess, manageable. I guess I, I guess it's raining outside so might be some network thing because yeah, my, yeah, yeah. mic is fixed. Yeah, okay. So if I have to capture this area, okay, from starting from here, if I go this location for to, to this particular location, or if I go any anywhere else, any location else, okay. For example, I'm randomly I'm taking in normal scenario, depends upon your process, you can choose anything. So I'm just going to use some like this. I'm going to use second to second. I say 15 to 56 something. Okay, so once I capture this area, this will contain all the informations, right? In which I need to find whether this contains this particular message or not. In real time, you may have, you may get this. This particular job has been completed successfully. Even so based upon the message, whatever appears on your mainframe screen, 
you will have to take decision on that. So I'll just create a variable. Okay, and let me give final message. Right? Yeah. So this final message is the variable which contains all the information on the screen. Right? So I just need to again make a decision. I will have to evaluate it. So to make a decision again, what I'll do? I'll use one flow decision activity again. Let me do it here. And I need some place, extra place here. So because of that, yeah. Now let me just write the condition here. So condition, what we can write here is the final message. Again, I'll trim it. Better result. Trim dot contains. So in anywhere that particular message, what I'm looking for is there. It means my job has been completed successfully. Because in mainframe, what will happen normally? This completion message or any this thing, they will always be the same. Those completion message will always be the same. I'm just doing this part. Suppose, yeah, I give okay. So if this condition is true, means I have completed my job successfully. So I'll just log a message. Okay, just let me drag. Let me keep this as one as a info only. And yes, I'll just put a message. The job has been completed successfully. Add just now here. Add me a variable. That is. Now dot to a string. So at which time the job has been completed? I just I'm just logging a message here. So once my job has been completed here, again I need to log out. Guys, as I said while explaining this page, as, as I have moved this cursor from here to there. So if I press enter, probably it will not work. See, I'm pressing enter, it is not working. It is just a limitation of this particular mainframe screen. It is just a trial version. There is nothing, there is, you do not have to do anything in the real time scenario. Okay, so I'll just simply close it and I'll just reopen it again because I need to go back and just explain you this thing. So Anubhav, that bug is related to the, the, the freeware or the free version yes. that we're using. Yes. It has nothing yes. to do with the real time. It has nothing to do with your UI path sure. or yeah. Me here till now, okay. This is right now, it has taken only this much, right? See, you can see this activity can this particular message can be anywhere on the screen, okay? So that's why we had captured a random area for explaining purpose. Now, if I press enter, my job has been completed, guys, right? So I need to log out. So I just press enter, it has come back again. Previously, it was not coming here because I had moved cursor from here to there now. I need to sign off. To sign off, I just need to give a command here on the same page here, on the same location, 21st, seven, right? So let's go to here. And yes, when we have the, once the job has been completed, then I need to press enter to come back to the previous page, right? So again, I'll use send control key. Here and just let me make a few 
places we are just about to complete the execution this designing of the code and it is already transmit so after that i need to give up and pass this sign of command on which location that is 27 21st row seventh column so i just set field activity set field at position and i need some space again i hope you know yes yes sir. hello hello no, anupam uh, can you can you rewind yourself to uh, can you hear us anupam your voice is breaking sir yeah i can hear you properly sir i hope am i clear now yeah 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 please tell yeah, me yeah. yeah yeah just just revise the the, the last last couple yes. of minutes yes yes i'll just just let yeah. me complete this particular activity and i'll i'll revise this entire code again okay so to show and seventh column i need to give this command that is sign off is the command once i have given sign off i just need to press enter once i will type sign off i need to press enter so it comes out so i need to press enter again right so guys see here you can make a decision suppose you are on the right page okay but that particular message in real time has not come so it will take some time so you can put inside a loop by connecting if this page does not contain this particular message in that case you can put inside this a loop here just simply by connecting this area so again it will go and capture if there is any error if not error then it will go to this screen and it will keep on looking for that yeah so guys this code is done okay now just let me go through this code one more time so that you understand it properly what we have done here we have first of all we used one terminal session activity where we used we established a connection between ui path and the main frame once we have connected we were able to successfully establish the connection between ui path studio and mainframe what we what did we do we just called few the credential part from orchestrator and after that we just logged in okay by providing user id and moving the cursor to the right location and by providing this password and after that we uh, went to that particular a uh, program file program development file where manager file where the my process has been kept actually inside which file after going to that particular program development manager file there is a file in which i have kept my code right so we had just gone there to that particular location okay by calling this thing in third file it was right so after that uh, you know after that we had just here when to call the right program in my particular location there were two programs one program i have to execute so what we have done we have called that particular file name with the name call webinar with this command and once this code has been executed called at the moment i have pressed enter this code started executing so after that we have evaluated even though my code has been run properly or not here there are limitless options possibilities in real time what and all things you can have it completely depends upon your process actually if any error comes you need to report an error based upon this screen if this particular screen is not there error screen comes based upon that you can proceed with that how to report an error whatever the process you will have to follow so right now we are getting this particular area so we have we are getting the only one page right now so once we get here we are just evaluating whether that page is containing the particular message which indicates me that my job has been completed if my job has not been completed then i am just keeping keep on checking inside a loop but the moment i get this condition successful okay validated it means okay my i have gotten that particular message means my job has been completed so after that what we have done just we have logged off okay i hope uh, you guys are able to understand this entire code 
it is just a very small code in real time you will have so many things but overall you will get an idea how a code is being okay a process is being automated inside a mainframe we are good to go say till now is super banpa thanks yeah, so uh, I, I, i i really know how many struggles were there while getting your first hands on onto it the sessions getting not properly mapped the various configuration issues related to provider but thanks yes. for giving us this insights now yeah. let's execute this code and see the output whatever we have discussed till now whether it runs properly okay so before that just let me close other things just let me and close I'll just minimize this thing. And this is all the codes. Close it. Yeah. Let's go here and let us see. Let's hope there will be any any error. It will be good for us to learn few things to debug something. If any error comes, we'll see what exactly it is. Team, you are you are able to see the password right now. Please remember this thing. I'm going to explain this part. Yeah, it ran completely successfully. If I go for this output, we had put a log message, right? The job has been completed successfully at this particular time, right? So one one point which I said earlier while entering the password here yeah just second guys yeah so when we were entering the password here manually we were not be able to see the password but when this code was executing you were able to see the password it is just again the limitations of this mainframe okay we have this ui path internal sorry provider what we have used right it is not been masked if it is why for even learning purpose only okay that particular area is not been masked so while executing the code you are able to see the password but in real time you will not see it i hope you guys understand that's why i said when i am entering this password here right now you are not able to see but while execution of this code we were able to see the password i hope we understand this part right so that's all from yeah. my side yeah guys so uh vibha are we good for the questions yeah we are good and thanks upon thanks very much for this session and thanks for being you know uh, being ready for this uh, session and coming forward and you know sharing about everything yeah we are good for the uh, question and answer so let me stop recording now yes so do you want to address any question so that that gets recorded otherwise uh, we are fine no that's fine guys yeah, uh, yeah. i tried my best to answer